Hello there, our Sunday School lesson this week is picking up right where we left off at in our Sunday School lesson last week, where we saw that we we're going to have trials, we we're going to have tribulations in our life. There is no escaping that. All of us, whether you are a believer or not, you're going to have struggle. You're going to have great struggle in your life. But the difference between us who believe and those who do not believe is that we saw that God is going to bring us through our struggles. He's going to lift us up over our trials and in our tribulations. In our Sunday School lesson this week, we're going to see Paul speak about the fact that God comforts us in our tribulation, as we'll see here in the third and in the fourth verse. Paul speaks, he gives thanks to the Lord for his comfort through tribulation. God, he comforts us in all that we go through. Like I said in our Sunday School lesson last week, no matter who you are, you're going to have struggle. You're going to have great struggle. You're going to go through some things. You're going to have afflictions. You're going to have infirmities. We are able to endure. We're able to persevere, not by our own power, not by our own might, but because of the Lord. The Lord loves us. Let us remember that God is love. He loves us. He's not going to let us suffer. He's not going to let us suffer alone. He is going to comfort us. And there is a reason. There is a reason Paul says there in the fourth verse that God comforts us. He comforts us because in our spirit, we cannot be so hurt. We cannot be so wounded in our spirit because if we are wounded, if we are hurt, if we are broken in our spirit, what good are we? Again, we have been commissioned by the Lord. We have been commissioned by his only begotten son to go out into the world, to baptize all people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are to baptize them in his instructions. The Lord wants us to minister the good news, to let the world know that there is forgiveness and that there is a salvation through him. We cannot do that when we are broken and when we are wounded in our spirit. As we see in James' letter, we can't do that when we are angry and when we're frustrated. The Lord wants us to be in high spirits. He wants us to be cheerful in our souls. So the Lord, he is going to comfort us so that we are lifted up in our souls, so that we are lifted up in our spirits, so that we can go out and do the good work. He comforts us so that we can go out and comfort all of those that are around us in whatever it is that they may be going through. Something that I'm going to be focusing in on on my sermon this week is the fact that we are in this world to help, to support one another. We cannot help, we cannot support each other when we are broken ourselves. So the Lord, he moves on our behalf to, to mend our broken spirit. He comforts us so that we have the ability to be our brother's keeper, to help, to support all of those that are around us. We'll see that's essentially what Paul says there in the third and in the fourth verse there, that God comforts us so that we have the ability to comfort all of those that are around us. Now, something that we'll see here as we look at the fifth and the sixth verse is the idea that we are going to again have our struggles. We have our struggles so that the Lord can console us. And again, we are told here in the fifth and in the sixth verse, something that nobody wants to hear. Nobody wants to hear that they are going to suffer, that they're going to have those bad days. You know, we always want to experience the highs rather than the lows. But again, the fact of the matter is that we're going to have lows. We're going to have days of great affliction. I know that personally in what I went through for five years of my life when I went, underwent dialysis because I was suffering from renal failure. That's kidney failure. Nobody wants to hear that they are going to suffer. But there is a reason for our suffering. There is a reason for the trials and the tribulations that we have. And something that I have preached about over the years is the fact that we are all living testimonies. We, we go through things in our life, things that we don't want to go through, to serve as a testimony to all of those that are around us. Those that are around us are made up of those that believe, in those that do not believe. There are believers who need encouragement. There are believers who need as much in, uh, encouragement as those who do not believe, right? So we, in our lives, we have great struggle. You are going to go through some things. You're going to have your afflictions, your burdens. The one thing that we know in our trials and in our tribulation is that the Lord is going to bring us through. 
there are many people out there that don't believe in the power of God. They don't believe that the Lord can lift us up over all of our obstacles, that the Lord can can bring us through our trials and lift us over our tribulations. Well, in your suffering, you serve as a testimony because you are still making it for one thing. And then when you overcome, you serve again as a testimony, not of your strength, not of your power, not of your might. You serve as a testimony of what God can do. And that is of so much importance in our world today. That is of so much importance for all of those that are around us. There are so many people who are around us who are going through some things, but they don't feel they have anybody that can help them. They don't feel that they have anybody that has the power to bring them through whatever it is that they're going through. But in what we go through in our trials and in our tribulations, when we overcome, we serve as the proof of God's work. We serve as the proof that if you have faith in him, the Lord will comfort you. The Lord will console you. God will lift you up over whatever it is that you are going through. You can make it if you believe as I did. That's the testimony that we carry with us. Whether you preach it verbally, you still serve as a living example. You don't have to say a word. I believe that there are many people who know that you are of faith. They see what you go through. And when they see that you have overcome again, you stand as a testimony of your faith in the one who brought you through. And the one who brought you through is the Lord our God. So there in the seventh verse, we'll see that there is hope. And Paul, he, he speaks of that hope there. We'll see here in the seventh verse that Paul says that there is hope. Hope that others will have in what they witness in us. Like I said, we are all living testimonies of the Lord. And so when someone see that you have overcome whatever it is that you may be going through today, it has the ability, that testimony of yours, it has the ability to inspire them to have hope in the Lord. It, it inspires them to come to God. It inspires them to turn to the Lord. And again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, James said that when we go through our struggles and our trials, when we fall into those various trials, we should rejoice. But James also said that we should be prayerful. So when we overcome because of God's comfort, it again serves as a testimony, but it also inspires hope for others to become prayerful because there are a lot of people that don't believe in the power of prayer. But when they see what prayer does for you, it gives them the hope and the inspiration to Hey, let me give God a try. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, your living testimony, again, it inspires others to taste and see that the Lord is good. So they may come to God. They may pray. They may start opening up their Bibles and, and studying scripture. They may even come out to worship with you. They may even approach you with questions that they may have. And you then have the ability, again, as a living testimony to testify of the Lord teach them, show them the way in which they ought to go. That is how we fulfill the task that, that Christ has commissioned us to do. So again, nobody wants to hear this. We are going to go through some things, but in what it is that you go through, we know that God consoles us, that he comforts us, just as we see Paul say here in our Sunday school lesson today. And we know that it leads to, yes, it leads to the good for us because we, we overcome, but at the same time, it can lead to the benefit. It can lead to the good for all of those that are around us because it can inspire the believer that already believes to keep on having faith, to keep on trusting in the Lord. And for all of those that do not believe, it can inspire them to give God a try, to taste and to see that the Lord truly is good. They can then open up their Bibles and study and come out to worship and they can go to prayer, go in prayer to the Lord and they can begin to believe and to join into fellowship with him. And they will see that the Lord will make a way for them as well. That is one of the best things that can come from our suffering. The fact that we stand as a living testimony of the Lord who can then bring others to Christ as well. So here in the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th verse, we'll go ahead and we'll close our Sunday school lesson out right here. We'll see here where Paul, he shares a testimony of something that he went through 
on his journeys. Paul, he had three missionary journeys. And he begins to speak about a moment in time that occurred to not only him, but if you look closely at those verses there, he's talking about himself and those who were journeying with him as well. And he speaks of an occasion that we find in the book of Acts. If you were to look in the book of Acts, and I'm going to throw it up here on the screen so that you can see some of the, some of the scripture there uh, from the book of Acts. Paul, he speaks of a, a moment in time where he was in what is called Asia, but he's talking about modern day Turkey there. And from the book of Acts, he speaks of a mob that was being led by a man named Demetrius. This, this is a very interesting fellow. This man was upset with Paul, and the reason why he was upset with Paul and those that were with Paul was because Paul and those who were with him were out ministering Christ. They were sharing the good news. And the thing about the good news is that uh, people will believe in the good news, just as we have believed, right? And so we have to remember that at that point in time, the, the people that were living in that land, they were off worshiping false gods. They were all wor worshiping Greek gods or the Roman gods. And so Demetrius was a man who would build shrines. He would build idols, statues of these guys. And that was his business. He, he would sell those shrines and those statues. And he was upset with Paul because Paul was taking away his business. The people, they were converting over. They were repenting. In other words, they were turning away from worshiping idols to listening to the way of Christ, uh, turning to the way of Christ, walking in the way of Christ. They were, in other words, becoming believers. And so they had no more need of the shrines that Demetrius was making. And so he was losing business. And this man was upset with Paul and upset with those that were working with Paul. And so he found others who thought like him, who believed as he did. And they formed together an angry mob and they went after Paul and they surrounded Paul and they burdened Paul. They grieved Paul and those who were with him. And so Paul, he states here in this scripture just how bad things were. OK, and he speaks of how the Lord delivered him in a day where he was very burdened, where he was very troubled. Paul felt that he would die because of what it was that he was going through. But again, that didn't happen for him the Lord brought him through. Now, there are some who believe that Paul was speaking of something, maybe he was ill. They may have thought that he was talking about uh, what he spoke of to the Corinthians about the thorn that he had in the flesh. But again, the scripture it crosses over with what we read in the book of Acts. And Paul was just letting those, he was letting them know that again, he's a living testimony of how God, again, works on our behalf, how the Lord delivers us from our struggle, from our trouble, whatever that struggle, whatever that trouble may be, whatever it is that you may be going through. Some of us, we have to deal with people who do their best to stand in opposition against us. Again, our burdens may be something with illness. Uh, some of us may have a disability. Whatever our struggle is, whether it is the not being able to pay bills or again, whether it is something that is physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, we can come through. And that's something that Paul, again, was sharing. That was something that Paul was letting the people know. Whatever it is that you go through, whatever your tribulation is, the Lord will deliver. God will comfort you. You are not alone. The Lord will bring you through. Okay? All right. So what did we learn in our Sunday school lesson this week? Well, we learned again that God is a God that loves us. We are not going to go through our tribulation by ourselves. God is going to comfort us in our tribulation. Okay, God's comfort, it goes a long way for us. Uh, because of his comfort, we know that we are going to overcome. And by our overcoming, we know that we then become a living testimony of what God can do for not only us, but what God can do for somebody else. We again become a living testimony of the Lord in which we should share with all of those that are around us. If we share what God has done for us with all of those that are around us, it can inspire them. It can encourage them to give God a try as well. So again, our testimony, it is for persuading. It is for encouraging all of those that are around us. 
to, to come to Christ to give him a try. And when one gives the Lord a try, when they genuinely give him a try, they will see that God will do for them as he has done for us. He will lift them over every obstacle that they face on their journey. They will be victorious over their tribulation. They will endure and they will persevere. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. If you want to dive even deeper into our lesson, the link is in the description below to where you can go to our website where you can read a full commentary of our Sunday school lesson. There's a link there for the audio as well to where you can listen to the full audio commentary of our lesson as well. OK. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed this week's lesson. I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week as well. Until that time again, I ask all of you continue to keep each other lifted up in prayers. Pray for all people, not just those, you know, but also those that you do not know. You never know who stands in the need of prayer. And again, let us continue about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Until next time, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.